Hello Serious Play Conference. Oh my goodness, I wish I were there. Thank you, Braun, for inviting me to be on this panel. I'm so honored. I can't believe it. Uh, my name is Al Gonzalez, and I'm a fifth and sixth grade STEM teacher in a small rural school, Chimicum Elementary School in Chimicum, Washington. It's a small town in Washington State here in the United States, and uh, so happy to be here. Well, I'm at school right now with students, so this is pre-recorded. Uh, but I'm here to tell you about the esports program that we've got going here at Chimicum Elementary. Uh, it started three years ago. It was 2019. We were ending the 2018-2019 school year, and I had been learning about esports because somehow, growing up, I totally missed the esports train. So when I heard that universities were giving scholarships to kids to play video games, I was like, where have I been? I gotta crawl out from under my rock. So here I was, all prepared to go to my school board and say, we need it, we need esports, and here's why. Well, they beat me to it. Like I said, this was the time where universities were giving scholarships for kids to play computer games at the university level. So our school board made the announcement first and said, hey, we've got to get esports at Chimicum schools. And I was like, can I do it at the elementary? They were like, yeah. So I was on board and ready to go. So now I was like, cool, I'm gonna start an esports club. Here's some of our kids playing uh, Minecraft. Okay. I was going to start it with sixth grade because in my mind, I knew there were middle school leagues and high school leagues. And even though I'm teaching elementary, I teach sixth graders and six, seven, eight is middle school. So I was like, boom, I'm in. So I started with just my sixth graders. Luckily, I teach all the sixth graders. Well, we're a small school, so that's not many kids. We have about 60 to 70 sixth graders uh, on a, any given year. So I opened it up to my students. I started with a Google form survey that I gave to each class because we had three classes. And that showed me I had just under 30 kids interested. So I'm looking at my room and I'm going, ooh, 30, a bit much. I was looking definitely under 30, 24 to 26 was about the max I was willing to handle. So the next thing was, how do these kids want to play? So I made another form uh, asking them questions like, well, first of all, do you want to play player versus player, PVP? Do you want to play building, where they build, do building challenges? And if you do, do you want to do it cooperatively? Or do you want to add some competition where two teams are building something and we decide uh, on some criteria to choose a winner? I also thought of other roles kids could play in the club. First thing, I can't play Minecraft anywhere near as good as they can. So I needed to know who can be team captains. And I also needed to know who's their backup in case they need help in coaching teams. So this happened totally organically. I am still shocked to this day. This group of 24 students, when they self-selected what they wanted to do, uh, I color-coded this because I have one red for each team, one blue, one purple. I've got some greens here, and then enough of the grays to round out the teams. Well, here's what I learned from this. It's really nice to have a designated team captain for each team, just one person. But they have a second-in-command. That's what I call the team coach, and that could help them strategize uh, for their games. Of course, you got to have your players, but I also wanted world builders because at that time we didn't know what leagues we were going to get in and how to play a game. And I started trying to build worlds and you know what? That was going to be a lot of work and I'm not that good. So I had enough kids to be world builders. They were going to build the games and then we were going to play them. But I also saw all these videos of these esports tournaments and the shoutcasters, which are the announcers, were amazing, and I got three kids, those were the greens, that actually wanted to do that. And then I added for our art uh, uh, 
students a chance to be designers, to design a logo. I had kids design a logo so we could vote on the best one. And in the future, I'd like to see us make maybe t-shirts or, or something with that logo to get our artistic students really involved with our team. So these roles are samples that worked really well, especially that first year. Then when I had enough kids deciding, oh yeah, we want to play PVP, I picked Java Edition. Java Edition cost about $27 per kid and we reuse those accounts. So you only have to pay $27. I figure I'm going to have about 20, 15 to 20 kids playing. I just asked for that many accounts. They gave me 25 accounts, so we were good to go. And I reuse those every year, so it's a one-time cost. We also found out that Minecraft Java worked great on the laptops that our school provides our students. Now, these are actually pretty good laptops. They run full Windows 10. Uh, and they had plenty of storage, so they were robust enough for kids to play. That's all I needed. I was set. Then I found this organization, CompMC. These guys who put this uh, uh, together have an amazing school league for students. It costs $20 per team. A team consists of five players, and you can have three more on a team to have alternates. And they're playing mostly a game called Capture the Wolf. Now think in real life Capture the Flag, only it's in Minecraft, and your people are rushing to the other side to try to get into what's known as their wool room to take their wool, and you have to run it all the way back to your side and place it in a trophy room to score a point before you get killed. Best two out of three matches wins the game. This has been so much fun. The kids have loved it. And I've got a video here that shows the Comp MC uh, uh, intro, which is amazing. And I've got, and, and I don't have time to show it right now. And I also have a video here of me shoutcasting or announcing one of our games. So you can see what it kind of looks like. And yeah, we'll have to watch that later. And I actually, this year, this was a team that was undefeated and got first place in the um, fall league for Comp MC. And then in the spring league, one of those, two of those players, the young man in the middle holding the trophy with the fantastic smile and the young lady right next to him, they both got uh, first place twice in a row. Fantastic. Oh, and the young lady in, in the mask, too. She was on both teams that won. Um, that was Minecraft Java. Got to tell you, Minecraft Education Edition also has a way to give you an eSports. So for my kids who like to build, they have building challenges in Minecraft Education. And I've got a video here of my first attempt at that one. It's actually an embarrassing attempt. It didn't work out very well. But I learned from my mistakes. And if you like those, the North American Scholastic Esports Federation has yearly challenges that are phenomenal. Highly recommended. Of course, if you have Nintendo Switches and you get a big screen monitor, you can have kids play games like Mario Kart, which our middle school was doing, uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, and Rocket League. Rocket League is a huge middle school uh, game. So I brought that into my classroom to give kids some practice so when they get into middle school, and for us as junior high, they can be ready. Also, if you have VR headsets, there's uh, Beat Saber is fun, but also Echo VR is another game your kids can play. So we use Twitch and OBS to live stream and record our games, which I'm trying to get students interested in it again after that first year, you know, COVID hit. And uh, I've been mainly doing it because I've had kids who just want to play and they just want to play PVP. So, yeah, that's what we've been doing here at Chimicum Elementary. It's been a lot of fun. I have a, a blog post here if you're interested in, in learning about how we did these. And, and you can reach out to me, too. Uh, thank you. Hello again. It's Al from Chimicum. And I'm looking at the question here. 
Can you describe how you made your first steps in your school or district? Um, in the introduction of my club, I, I described how it was actually really easy for me because by the time I was ready to make my spiel to the school board and my principal and convince them that we really need esports and that games are good and, and, and all this stuff, they had already decided. And they were looking at starting it in the high school. So they got a high school uh, esports coach. And so when I asked to do it in the elementary, it was like such an easy yes. So I had freedom to just do it. So with that, um, I, rec I didn't ask for much at first. Our, our tech department had some spare mice. Uh, the kids usually bring their own mice and they've got their own headsets. So they, you know, these are gamers. So they have their own stuff. So that wasn't a problem. The laptops we have at the school were perfect. So all I needed from our district was the 25 Minecraft Java uh, edition licenses that they bought. And they were just 27 bucks a piece. So that wasn't bad at all. Not much of an expense for the school. Um, but to start, okay, I, before I could just say, hey kids, come on over to my room and, and let's talk, I started with the survey. So my first survey was just, hey, are you interested? How likely are you to join? And can you come? I was doing it Tuesdays and Thursday mornings from 7.30 to 8.30. For kids in our school to do that, they have to get up early, of course, and get on the bus that takes kids to the junior high and senior high because they start an hour earlier than the elementary and primary. So if they could do that, boom, I kept a list of those names. Now for those kids, uh, who just the kids who were interested, I gave them this follow-up. Well, you're interested. You say you can make it to our uh, meetings. What are you interested in playing? Was it mainly PvP or building? Did you want to compete at all? And then I wanted to find out if they could host a Minecraft education world from home because part of our program, if they're going to do anything after school, they have to be able to do it at home and usually with each other, not always led by me because, you know, we're, we're busy. We have a lot of uh, commitments for our afternoons. So I needed to find out if they could do that. Then I needed to know, well, can you even play in the afternoons? Because this year I had more kids than ever who not only wanted to do Minecraft esports, but they also play after school sports. I had a bunch of football players and baseball players. They weren't available to play against other schools. So I had them come in the mornings and practice and, and we could do some competitions in the morning, but then I needed kids who could play after school to actually compete against uh, our other school, which was a school from California in Arroyo Grande. So that was my big question. Who are my morning kids? And how many kids can play in the afternoon? Because that's how I put the teams together. Uh, so the next big thing was the permission slip. Now I know which kids are interested. Now I know which kids. So I started weeding the list down that way. Uh, with this permission slip, I'm having kids agree to, hey, you know, now that you're going to be an esports athlete, you know you have to get uh, a good amount of sleep every night, right? Because you can't be playing all night and, and affecting your health. You're not going to be very competitive. Which means you also have to eat healthy and exercise regularly. So having kids who were doing after school sports, I was like, wow, you guys got the exercise part down. Um, but then I wanted a commitment that they're not going to miss games or meetings. Because then that affects our, our ability to compete and we, compete, and we didn't want to have to forfeit games. I mentioned the parent part. That was huge. So if I could get kids past this, I now knew I had serious kids. So my final survey was, what position do you want to play or what role do you want to play? And I, that first year, man, I had kids who wanted to do everything. Last year and this year, they mostly want to play. And they want to play PvP. We haven't had much building competition. Nobody even wanted to compete in the NASIF competitions. That, that was a bit of a bummer for me because I love those two. But I got to say, these kids have been hardcore capture the wool players. And it's nice after three years to finally have a team who could win. 
Uh, and honestly, it was because of, yeah, that guy right there, the kid who was holding the trophy. He was our, our most valuable player for sure. So yeah, that's how I started uh, our club. And it's follow the same procedure every year. It's been working great. By the way, this year I also added fifth graders because I didn't have enough sixth graders to, to compete. And next year I might even include fourth graders. There are a lot more elementary kids participating in esports now. Well, now I'm looking at question number three. Is esports just for gamers and nerds? What do you do in your program to break this stereotype? I I've been fortunate that when I offer it, uh, especially with sixth graders are part of an elementary program, they haven't done that, that gender split where girls are like, oh, this isn't for me. I've had, still have had a majority of boys, but I am getting girls involved. The other thing I do is I, I give room for other roles. And two of the big roles, three actually, have been world creator, announcer, shoutcaster, and art artist. I want to get the artistic kids to know they've got a, a, a avenue into the gaming industry. Huge, huge uh, opportunity there for um, careers. And that worked out really well. I, I still love to look at this, this uh, makeup of the teams because I don't think I'll ever have another perfect year like this again. So I had three kids who wanted to do shoutcasting. I had one kid in each team who was going to be world creator, world builder, one assistant coach in each team, and one coach in each team. Oh my goodness. I, I, that just warmed my heart. And that's where I came up with these uh, roles here for our gamers. And yeah, that's how I do it to make sure we get not just the, the nerdy uh, gamers. Because I have a few. But like I said, too, in my other previous question, question number two, this year more than ever, I've got kids who also are into sports, which warms my heart to see that kids are like not limiting themselves to I just play football and baseball or I just play Minecraft. No, man, you can do it all. Well, hello again. Looking at question six, where do you see your esports program heading in the next year or years? Uh, for that, I'm coming back to this slide here because the last two years, I've had teams that just want to play Capture the Wolf, just want to compete against other schools, which, again, it is so much fun. I love it. But I miss that first year having a, a robust and, and varied group of kids who want to do more than just Capture the Wolf. And um, I'm going to jump over. After adding a few more games, I also want some time to do this, the NACEF building competitions that are so amazing. But that requires kids to have a lot of initiative to do this from home. And when you're using Education Edition, you both have to be on at the same time or build separate worlds, which is not easy to merge. Uh, because the way Education Edition works, you have to host the world in order for others to join it. There's no server like Java, that's running 24-7. As soon as you quit your game, nobody else can join it. And it's only saved on your computer, so nobody else can work on it when you're not there. Uh, that's a bit uh, uh, difficult for kids to organize. I also want to see our kids playing a little more Mario Kart, Smash Bros, Ultimate, and Rocket League, uh, and our VR games, because I've got four Oculus 2 headsets. And I just want to see some varied gaming. Um, I, I do use Minecraft education in the classroom, and I have uh, apps for our Oculus. So I do incorporate this into my academics, but in the morning, it's just for the pure love of gaming. And I just want to see that continue to increase and have kids who are just interested in a variety. But we're still going to compete because we have kids interested. So, yeah. <laughs> 